This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at some Maya tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at duplicate objects with history using duplicate special, offset faces uniformly using the transform component tool, and how to move objects and components without clicking on a manipulator first. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up we have the duplicate object and preserve history. So I'm just going to go and create a cylinder. And I'll just scale that up a little bit so we can see it. And so now if I press T on the keyboard or I go over here into the channel box and click there, I can access this history window where I can change the number of subdivisions and some other stuff. So I'm going to change the number of subdivisions to whatever, 32, let's say. And now I want to duplicate the model. And so I'm just going to go up to edit and go down to duplicate or hit control D. And when I duplicate the model, you can see it duplicates it, but there's no history. And so over here on this guy, I can click here and I can change this back to whatever I want. But on this one, there's no history and it's kind of annoying. So it would be nice if we could duplicate that and then also be able to edit this one as well. Because often I've placed this one in the scene where I want it and then I just want to duplicate it and maybe change the subdivisions, for example. And that can be accomplished by using the duplicate special command. So I'm just going to delete this one there and then I'll select this guy here and you can see that's come up. I've got eight or whatever. It's going to set that back to, let's say, 16. OK, and then you want to come up into edit and then go down to duplicate special and you want to go into the options box there. And then I'm just going to do a edit reset. And what you want to do is you want to leave everything at default, but you want to turn on duplicate input graph. So turn that guy on. Hit apply, it duplicates the object. It's gonna move it out of the way there. And you can already see, we've got the channel box here. We can now dynamically adjust the subdivisions or we can come and press T and it'll bring up this menu and you can do the same thing here. So again, like here, let's set this guy down to eight, select it, apply, duplicate special with the input graph, press T and then you can adjust the subdivision so it preserves the history. So that's super handy. I might even go in and change my control D hotkey to actually be duplicate with input graph because I want this more often than I want to duplicate without the input graph. But it's up to you how you want to work. Next up, we have the transform component uniform scale for faces. So I'll show you what the problem is here first. So I'm going to select the face here and then I'm going to go up to edit mesh and then go down to extrude. And it's going to give me an extrude node. And then I can say change, uh, whoops, not the thickness, but the offset. And so see, as I change the offset, it's a perfect uniform shape that matches the initial shape of the face. And as you extrude it back out, it lines up perfectly and everything is all good. So I'm just going to accept that and then just deselect the model and reselect it. And then I'm going to come up to edit and go delete by type and delete history just to get rid of the extrude node. So now I just have like a basic poly mesh. And now here's the problem. If I want to go back and edit that face, watch what happens. I go to face mode. I select the face. I enter the scale tool. And if I uniformly scale, watch what happens. It doesn't line up. See what's happening? It scales down, but as it scales up, it scales up and it like goes through the model. And when we were extruding, it would have scaled up like this, but it would have also scaled out like this at the same time. And for whatever reason, this is just how Maya has always worked. If you scale a face, it doesn't scale it uniformly to fit the shape that you have selected. And this has always been a real pain for me. But there's a trick you can use as a workaround. So instead of using the scale tool to scale that face back out, we can come up to Edit Mesh, and we can add a transform component node, add that to it there. And then over in the channel box, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a little offset setting here. And if we select that setting and we scroll that setting, it will actually do the same thing as we were doing with extrude. See how nice this is? It lines up perfectly now. So you can actually go and get back to that offset setting, even though you've already deleted the history. Uh, and to scroll that setting there, like I was doing dynamically, what you do is you select the transform component node, left click here so it turns blue, and then over in the viewport, hold the middle mouse and drag it left and right. And that will drag the scale of the offset slider up and down. So pretty cool, super helpful. This has saved me a number of times recently, like such a powerful tool compared to the default scale tool. 
Okay, and finally, we have the move components and move objects without touching the manipulator. So this is super cool. This was broken for many versions of Maya. This feature has existed since Maya version 2, like 18 years ago. And then it was broken, I think, around 2017, maybe up until 2019. I'm in 2020 right now, and I know for sure it works in 2020. But if you're on an older version, you may also find that it is still broken. But it recently started working, and it's so nice. So in Maya, probably everybody knows, for example, if you hold the middle mouse button down and you're in the move tool. So to do the move tool, you'll drag along one of these axes or like one of these axes. But if this guy's yellow here and you drag here, it's in screen space, but you don't actually need to select that. If you're in like all move mode or whatever, and you just middle mouse drag anywhere on the screen, you can move your object in screen space. You don't have to click on the object. You don't have to touch the gizmo or whatever. You can just drag it around in screen space. That also works for the scale tool. If you middle mouse drag left and right, you can scale it up. You don't actually have to come down and touch any one of these. Scale it up. This is probably the one that I use like the most. But what you might not know is that you can access constrain those same type of movements. So I'm just going to switch to the move tool. Now, if I middle mouse drag, it goes in all axes. But if I hold shift and I drag in the direction of one of these arrows, just roughly in the direction, I don't have to have my mouse over here. So here, my mouse is way over here. And I hold shift and I drag up with the middle mouse button. Watch what happens. It will constrain to that axis. So I can do that over here. I can go to the right. I can go down. I can go left. So you can constrain scale, uh, sorry, constrain, transform your object really easy. And this is really helpful because you might be like, oh, whatever, uh, doing some modeling, just moving some stuff around or whatever. And then you just want to move that up. And I find it really intuitive, the muscle memory. I want to move that up, hold shift and just press up and it's locked to that plane. And then once it's locked in that plane, you can move all around and it doesn't matter what you do. Like, see, I'm doing circles with the mouse. It's still locked to that plane. And then to get back out of that plane, you can press the W key or come over here and click this to reset the tool back to default. And then it goes into 3D. Or if you were constrained along that plane, you can just hold shift and constrain along a different plane. So see, my mouse is way over here. Once you get used to working this way, it becomes like super intuitive because you'll not need to go to the side view, for example. Like say you'll just grab these verts and you just hold shift and go up. And you know it's up instead of grabbing those verts and then like going here and then like selecting this and doing that it can be like over here modeling doing some history whatever hold shift go up hold right go this way and so on and so forth and that of course works with scale as well so i'm going to grab this guy switch to the scale tool hold shift and drag this way and you can see my mouse is way over here and i have full control over the model i can press r and then i can uniformly scale as well which is super helpful and for whatever reason, rotation does not work, or at least I don't know how to make it work. So if you hold shift and rotate, it always goes in screen space, which is pretty much useless. So you do have to click that one to highlight it. Once it's been highlighted, then you don't need to actually touch the gizmo or manipulator or whatever. But for rotation, for whatever reason, you do need to pick an access first. But it's still helpful to be able to rotate stuff when you're up here working on something else. And you just want to grab that face, go along Y and then scroll like that to rotate the object or the face or whatever. This can actually be handy if things are off screen or partly off screen, as long as you know you have it selected or whatever. If it's like over here and your mouse happens to be here, you can just hold shift and you can actually drag it into view. Whoops, that didn't make sense because we couldn't see the grid. So if your object's over there, you can't even see the manipulator at this point. So it'd be annoying. You'd have to fly over there. So if you want to maintain your camera like here, you can just hold shift and it would drag along X or up or down or forward and backward, whatever you want. It's pretty helpful. What I often use this technique for is actually extrusions. So if I'm going to select a face here, I'm going to go to extrude face. And then instead of doing all this, because that's a bit slow, I'm immediately going to press R to enter the scale tool. And then see, I don't need to go over there. I'm like, my mouse hasn't moved, but I can still have full control of this. And then if I hit W and I hold shift and I drag up, I can move it up and down or whatever. And then I could just press G, for example, and hit R and then scale another one in. So, you know, you could do this, whatever. Looks like you have to come over here to actually hold shift and extrude it up. But then we could do this again, press G, press R, go like that, you know, do this. And then often I get my thing out of the way there so I can look at it. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I want to adjust it a little bit more. 
So it's cool. You can kind of have control over the components or the objects no matter where your mouse is on the screen. So that can be super helpful and save you a lot of time. So definitely check it out. Thanks very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you liked this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a phenomenal day.